All right, take two. Um, apparently, you actually have to hit the record button uh, for this shit to work. But anyway, hey, my name's Dave. Welcome to the Radio Afterglow. Appreciate you stopping by and spending a few minutes checking out uh, the records that I had to pick up uh, recently. And um, in my last couple of videos, I talked about how my uh, my collecting habits are laser-like focused into a couple of specific areas. Well, this video proves that to be a bunch of bullshit. This is just a, a miscellaneous collection of things that I keep picking up uh, because I can't help it, and neither can you, so don't judge. Um, this first one probably could have fit into the Michigan video that I put out uh, just recently, and I thought about at including it in that one, but there's enough um, variety going on here that I thought it should just fit into this miscellaneous category. And um, that is, of course, the Garage Days compilation that came out on uh, Black Friday, Record Store Day, Black Friday, 2017. I've seen a couple of guys show this already. Um, Hogs Ear Report, for one. And, um, and I'm a little late showing it, uh, but I have had it for a while. I did get to the store on uh, Black Friday, but like the Cheap Trick album that I showed on my Christmas video, I literally walked in the door as the last copy was being picked up. But um, my wife, um, she just uh, felt so so sorry for me and my you know you know tears of um, disappointment that she snuck out and got this on the secondary market for my birthday, uh, which was uh, uh, you know a few weeks later, and uh, now I have it. So here it is, and thanks to her. And this is a great compilation. Now I. This is the first compilation I have, a garage rock compilation I had. Um, you know, there's the Pebbles and the Nuggets and the Girls in the Garage and all that kind of stuff, which are pretty cool, and I never really thought about getting any. And, uh, I'm sorry, watching the Wings and, and Bruins here behind you, so if I seem distracted, it's because I am. But, uh, you know, so, but I, but this one caught my attention because of one particular band, uh, the Pedestrians. And they are a band out of Western Michigan, Grand Rapids area, um, back in the 60s, obviously. And uh, one of their singles is on here, and it's it's something that, you know, it's not rare, it's not impossible to find, but you're going to pay in the, the mid-double digits for it, so it's not something I'm really, really ready to do quite yet, so having it on here uh, was awesome. And... Um, there's not a lot of information. Uh, everything, all the notes are right here on the back, so there's not a lot to talk about or, or talking about any most of these bands or the tracks. It's just a few, few things by uh, uh, Matt Block, some dude named Black Matt Block. I'm, apparently, I should know who that is, but I don't. Um, but it does come on this cool dark green marble vinyl. I don't know how well you can see that. Delight, but uh, nice, nice swirl label though. That's pretty cool. And um, but yeah, so this was a this was a good comp. It was really really clean sounding, really great, uh, really great sound. Uh, the if you'd watched my Christmas video, the Cheap Trick album was the pressing was just noisy and it was it was unbelievably poor. But this was really great. I'm really really happy to get this. And uh, if you haven't checked this out yet, and you're even later than I am, uh, go ahead. If you like the Pebbles and the Nuggets this would be a good one to add to your collection. This next one was a uh, complete blind buy, uh, as I typically do. Uh, never heard of the band. Mm, the, what caught my attention was the cover. Um, and this is the Batfish Boys head. And uh, yeah, it's got this probably a radio station sticker. I meant to clean that off of here, but obviously I didn't. But uh, yeah, so you're looking at the cover, it's either a, a biker chick or dominatrix, which, okay, so that's kind of intriguing. And uh, it put out on Twilight Records, which was a label I'd never heard of, but it uh, got a hold of the whole Batwing candle thing, so kind of gothy. Thought that might be interesting as well. And uh, it turns out it is, it is pretty cool. It's uh, This band is an English band. Um, Oh, and by the way, this came out, uh, it did say Twilight Records, but it came out in um, 1986. But anyway, uh, English band um, founded by, uh, coincidentally, a dude named Simon Detroit. Uh, he is not from Detroit, he's English, but he, uh, he was 
previously in a band called the March Violets or Marching Violets, something like that. I'd never heard of, kind of a goth rock punk band. And uh, that's kind of what you get here. Uh, I hear a lot. If you read about it, you're gonna you're gonna hear it described as um, garage rock, uh, goth punk. Um, and yeah, I kind of hear that. I, it to me, it sounds you know honestly, it sounds uh, like uh, late or early period REM. Uh, it sounds like midnight oil, midnight oil, um, alternative rock sort of stuff a little, with a little bit of gar garaginess and. Uh, uh, one second, Witkowski looks like he's going to wail on somebody. But then the refs came in. Anyway, so it was very interesting. I, I enjoyed it. It wasn't great. It didn't blow me away. Um, here's the custom labels there. Uh, it didn't blow me away, but it was. It was if you if you like the Midnight Oil, REM, those kinds of bands, and you're not familiar with the Batfish Boys. Give it a try. Uh, I'm sure there's something here on YouTube. I'm not going to do a needle drop this time because uh, the freaking YouTube police got me last time. So we'll have that. Um, this next one, excuse me while I throw the ball, is uh, the first of its kind in my collection. And um, of course, you're all familiar with this band, so I'm not going to talk too much about it. This is the Animals, Animal Tracks. Um, this uh, came out in 1965 in the U.S. This is a mono pressing uh, MGM. And this is one of those albums where um, the uh, you know it's released in the UK with different track listing and different cover and uh, it's even a different name uh, than it is in the US, which is annoying as hell. In fact, that is the cover that it has, or this the equivalent album has in the UK. Um, this is really the track listing isn't even the same. It's it's more of a hodgepodge of previously released singles, um, but it is the first Animals album that I have in my collection. I was waiting to get a hold of this one uh, in particular because it has um, two of the three, two of my three favorite Animal songs and two of my favorite songs from the 60s all together, and uh, of course that's We Gotta Get Out of This Place, um, which has nothing to do with Vietnam, but it became sort of an iconic Vietnam anthem. And uh, don't let me be, don't let me be misunderstood, which uh, which I really enjoy that song. The other the other song from the Animals that I like is uh, when I was young, but of course that's apparently just showed up on a uh, greatest hits comp, which I'm not really into those sorts of things. So I might just pick up the single if I can find it. But anyway, what took me so long finding or getting a hold of this album was uh, these are usually beat to shit. They're, they've been played well, um, played a lot. And this one, um, I don't know if you can see that on there, Barbara, although she did do some, did, a, did a little bit of writing on the back, um, and it, the album was kind of grimy when I got it, it looked in pretty good condition. Uh, I cleaned it up, and it turns out that Barbara uh, did did put this through its paces. But it still sounds really clean. Uh, there's occasional pops, a few clicks, but uh, still, it was really great. I really enjoyed it. Um, yeah, so if, if you're a fan of the animals, which I'm, I'm sure most people are, um, you know, I, I, don't, I don't know, it's, this is one of those bands where it's going to be hard to get, I don't want to go get a UK press just because it has a different track or listing and all that kind of shit, so, um, I don't know, I probably won't have very many animals in there in my collection, I'm just looking for a few certain songs and be done with it. All right. This next one is another another album from 1965. Um, this one on uh, Reprise Records. Now, my wife is a uh, a big fan of uh, the jazz crooners, uh, the Dean Martin, uh, Frank Sinatra, Bing Crosby sorts of guys. And again, this is also another first for my collection. Um, this is the first Frank Sinatra album that uh, we added to our collection, and it. It's uh, September of My Years, come, came out in 1965, as I said. Um, yeah. if, you, if, you're, if you're not... Okay, everybody's familiar with Frank Sinatra's music. Uh, if, even if you're just familiar with it from movies and TV, you've heard his stuff. Um, and I enjoy it too. Uh, what I did, though, uh, in error, was I chose this as the first album. Of course, I didn't really choose it. It came across, it was the first one we really came across that was indecent. And I'm sorry for the camera moving around, but the dog's having a freak. 
but um, it's the first one I came across that was in decent condition for a decent price. And man, this is not the one you want to get if you don't have any Frank Sinatra albums. I should have, should have, uh, the first clue should have been the very first sentence on the back in their little write up here where it says, uh, Tonight will not swing. Tonight is for serious. And yeah, this, Frank recorded this um, just before his 50th birthday. So this was a, a collection of songs, uh, you know, How Old Am I? Don't wait too long. It gets lonely early. Last night when we were young. I mean, you get where I'm going with this? Um, if you want to get totally depressed and 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 you know rum, ruminate on everything that you have yet to accomplish in your life, this is probably the soundtrack for it. Um, this is definitely not the upbeat, you know, kind of Frank Sinatra that we're all uh, we all know and love. But, uh, I mean, it was good for what it was, but it just was just a bummer of an album. Um, so, yeah. Y you can't go wrong with Frank Sinatra if you're a Frank Sinatra fan or even a fan of that style of music, but you might want to start somewhere else. So, it was good. Don't get me wrong. All right. Last up, uh, this is uh, some some late '70s blues rock. Uh, again, I, I you see these albums everywhere. I've seen them everywhere. This is the first one I picked up. This is actually the second from the band. Uh, this is Snake Rattle and Roll by Crawler. Came out in 1978 on uh, Epic Records. And this band, uh, you know, straight up blues rock. This was. Uh, the remaining members of the uh, Backstreet Carlers, something like that, um, and uh, uh, it was Paul Kossoff's band of Free. Uh, well, when Paul passed away, the rest of the band just changed their name to Crawler, and there they are there, and uh, continued on. And this was, you know, Southern Fried Blues Rock, which uh, you know is good. It's it's enjoyable. It's it's not uh, outstanding. It's not. Uh, genre bending it's it's not something that'll blow you away but you know it's it's fun if you're into the blues rock sort of stuff with a little bit of southern twang um, it's a good album it's definitely something I'm gonna keep in the collection I'll probably if I find their first album um, for a relatively cheap price and uh, not all beat up I'll, I'll, I, I won't hesitate to add it so there you go Okay, that's all I got this time around. Told you, kind of a miscellaneous, mishmash sort of update. But, uh, you know, when we go into the antique stores and the flea malls and the uh, uh, flea markets and the uh, record bins, we can't, uh, we can't help ourselves when something catches our eye. Am I right? All right, guys, uh, thanks for stopping by. I really appreciate you taking the time to hang out with me, and I uh, will uh, catch you later.